Trump making Chinese jokes, Asian TikTok drama, people getting robbed in San Francisco. This is your viral Asian news update. I didn't make any of this up. It's just what's trending. Number one, Andrew Trump is dissing his 2024 primary Republican presidential candidates. Oh. Whether we're talking about Glenn Youngkin or Ron DeSantis, he's like, uh, you know, Youngkin, it's an interesting take. Sounds Chinese, doesn't it? Yo, what region of China are you talking about, Trump? Uh, you know, probably the uh, Southern Tuisan region. <sighs> I saw the Youngkin Association building on Match Street next to my favorite Chesu Bows. Imagine this, guys. Trump has managed to, in the effort to take down his other opponent and diss them, who's white, he also just throws Chinese people under the bus once again. I, Thank you very much, I man. I will say that Trump is from New York, so he is familiar with what Cantonese names anglicized look like. I, I mean, I would argue it could also be South Korea, Young Kim. If it was a Kim, you change the N to an M, but it, it, obviously, no. China's the enemy right now, and obviously the geopolitical relationships have deteriorated over the past four or five years. So, of course, any associating anybody with China no. is going to be bad. Andrew, it went from Trump's grandchildren, uh, Ivanka Trump, Trump's kids speaking Mandarin going <laughs> she, she's just singing it just like any other Chinese kid would at the front of the Chinese class. It went from funny. that to just like associating anybody's like German anglicized name sort of sounding Cantonese to just something bad. You know? yeah. And interestingly enough, Andrew, Yunkin is actually Junkin in German and Trump is actually Trump in German. They're both of German descent, actually, majority wise. So you've got two German Americans dissing each other for being like Chinese. And, uh, you know, interestingly enough, Andrew, most people in politics are either of British or German descent. Andrew, guess what? America fought wars against the British and the Germans in World War II. So, I mean, obviously British are way earlier. Andrew, long story short, Andrew, one, I do think this shows just that like anything China is just bad. Oh. Yeah, I think you're gonna see it on both sides. The both the left and the right are gonna use China as like a talking point in this upcoming election. And number two, Andrew, this is my actual prediction of how what's gonna happen. Him and Ron DeSantis, Ron DeSantis are gonna have a runoff mm -hmm. in the primary. DeSantis is gonna win because Trump got too much dirt on him. Trump is gonna get mad because he feels entitled to it. Mm -hmm. He's gonna break off, build a third party, and it's gonna uh, deviate the two votes, obviously guaranteeing. Democrats will win. I don't think any Chinese people use true social. Number two, Andrew, the City College of SF has finally fought off budget cuts and has a two-year Cantonese certification program, especially for people who want to become, you know, public service infrastructure workers, EMTs, police officers, uh, nurses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Andrew, this is a big win in SF where Toysan or Canto region people make up a pretty significant portion of the population. Yeah, I think it's a big win because obviously Cantonese, it kind of gets overlooked right now because the lingua franca of China and to be honest, I mean, you know, as far as if you need to learn a Chinese language right now, you're going to pick Mandarin. There's way more resources for it. I mean, even us growing up in Seattle, there was like no class that you could take to learn Cantonese. You would have to have learned that from your family or your community. All right, Andrew, we got to get into the tea because the tea? we are half Cantonese, half Northern Chinese. And uh, sometimes yes, these are. sides, not everybody views it this way. Sometimes people can kind of get into a, like a high school tribalism rivalry between yeah. these two groups, right? Yeah, 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 and like yeah. Cantonese people are like, oh, I already censored, I call you, I'm sorry, I don't want to My yeah. bad, my Cantonese is not that good. Yeah. And then the Mandarin people are like, <laughs> and it's just like, damn man, why is everybody gotta be like that? Because obviously for me and you, we know so many words from so many different dialects because there's like a legitimate curiosity and it's not about to us which one's more dominant and which one's, you know, but I, I understand if not everybody has the same level of curiosity or I guess time to devote like we do to learn about all these different cultures and subcultures. I mean, listen, I think that there's pros and cons. Obviously, I like that, you know, eventually everybody that is Chinese will be able to understand each other and communicate, you know, but obviously, yeah, it's tough. You know, like Cantonese is one of those dialects that obviously is actually still spoken by like almost like 100 million people around the world. But of course, it's probably decreasing due to the fact that it's not really being taught in schools, except for SF City College. Yeah. This is not promo for you guys. I'm just saying, shout out. I will say this. For everybody who doesn't have, you know, time to dedicate to a program or a class or money or the commitment, there should be a program where you can learn just like off curated media, whether that's old like Zhao Xing Chi, like Stephen Chow movies or some, you know, whatever. Raps from whoever you like, LMF or the... Uh, 
Fama or Edison Chen. I don't know. Hey. Is he canceled? I'm just saying. <laughs> Hey, if it makes Cantonese people feel any better, I don't know if you knew this, but this is a fun fact, that Cantonese, current Cantonese, is more similar to Middle Chinese, which is the Chinese that was uh, widely used a thousand years ago. So a lot of ancient poems from that time rhyme in Cantonese better than Mandarin because Cantonese is technically older and more widely used back then. Yo, let me give a shout out to Dr. Candice Lin. I feel like she's one of the best people who's like teaching both at the same time. I'm a fan. You know, as somebody who does speak Cantonese and Mandarin to some level, uh, it's not that dissimilar to me. I, I, I can see the differences, but it's definitely not that dissimilar. Yeah, Cantonese got some pretty robust uh, swear words too. Dude! I don't know. Number three, Andrew, unfortunately, several wedding photographers have been getting robbed around San Francisco for their expensive camera equipment. Uh, one person gave it up after a struggle. The other person, Andrew, refused to give it up and they got pistol whipped in the head. Thank God, nothing really like downside ultra i mean obviously getting pistol whipped is bad but like he didn't get killed right yeah and no it could have been it could have turned out worse and you know thankfully everybody is generally okay but man imagine that you're taking wedding photos and you're like oh like i'm so happy to be marrying with you and then she's just like hey give me your camera blah, blah, blah. and then you're just like it's it's just crazy you just have to know like if you're taking wedding photos it is true that that looks like a target to these bad people because they know that you're in a vulnerable state because everybody's trying to look nice you're probably not rolling with security or like a squadron of ma male photographers or whatever you know what i'm saying so you just gotta be careful out there and sf gotta do something about that crime but you know that that's a whole political thing you guys can vote on it you know i understand not wanting to live in fear and what does it mean when like a one out of 2000 chance increases to like one out of 200 because people are still willing to roll the dice at one out of 200 even though one out of 200 theoretically is a 10x risk exposure increase from one out of 2000 but hey you guys just have a plan point number four and we are talking about controversial asian tiktokers both from a content perspective as well as a backstory perspective today we're talking about reed Choi. drop this video he made about colorism stop asian hey stop asian hey and colorism <laughs> right because because we're all asian stop hey Oh, David, my head kind of hurts because the TikTokers are so smart and philosophical. Thank you yeah. for your insight. And you know, the interesting thing, there's actually a lot of TikTok drama and beef on like an interpersonal level, like not even a content-based level, but we're not going to get into that. I'm not getting into that. I'll let you guys about that, talk about the popular, cool, hot people, like extension of like popular mean girls in high school. But they're thing. so pretty, all of them, the boy and the girl in yeah. this. As far as the content goes, uh, you know, he definitely said... Uh, something that clearly struck a tone because there's like 4,000 comments on it. I will say this, typically under the definition of colorism is like within a country, whether we're talking about South Asia, the Philippines, the Latin, Latino American community, these are uh, regions that have been colonized by European powers. Typically right. they would install people who are full European or partially European at the top of the hierarchy to rule down the natives. And it kind of was like a gradient between uh, East Asians and Southeast Asians, I believe what he's referring to is possibly more of narrative power, more of liquidity. I mean, I'm, I mean, I think in media, right? Yes, we do know that it is more focused on East Asian stories. I think Southeast Asian stories are coming up. And we always say on this channel that East Asians who are successful need to do a better job of helping prop up Southeast Asian stories because guess what? There are more Southeast Asians in the world than there are Japanese and Koreans put together, you know, for example. So I always bring up that stat because that just goes to show you there's a lot of Southeast Asians in the world. But anyways, what I'm saying is uh, what I don't like about this type of thinking, even though it's a real feeling, I think the type of thinking is flawed because you're trying to take dynamics from the Americans or the Western world. Right, Latin from, America, for from example. From a very specific history of colonization and slavery. And then you're trying to apply them on Asian Americans or... Asia, which has a completely different history. So I just don't think it works, man. It's a clunky comparison. I would really wish people strayed away from it, but it's a feeling. But Andrew, the hot TikTokers are mentioning it and it sounds well, truish. He said something kind of smart, so it's true. TikTok is a great place to spark thoughts, not a great place for discussions. You're saying that TikTok is not the Quora equivalent of video platforms. I don't know, man, it's in platform. Uh, you, but you know what? If it sparks an actual healthy discussion, then so be it. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching those four pieces of viral news emanating from the Asian American community this week. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and make sure you let us know some other pieces of news that we need to cover, analyze, break down, get some hot takes on. Ooh, also check out our shorts. If you guys don't have time to watch the whole video, check out the shorts, baby. They're, They're way shorter. They're popping.